Hi, my name is Cyril and today I'm going to show you how to deploy OpenShift with Ansible. First, a few words about my employee at Finisci Group. We are one of the biggest open source companies in Switzerland, founded in 2000. Today, around 50 people work with us. Thanks to our fully open source strategy, we have a broad customer base all around Europe. Then, a few words about our partner and sponsor for this video, Red Hat. Red Hat is the biggest open source distributor in the world with well-known products like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Ansible or JBoss for example. Over 10,000 employees work with them and an even bigger community of users and developers help to make their products better every day. What is Ansible? Originally developed in 2012, Ansible is one of the best known automation tools of today. In the good old days, provisioning a server was hard work. First the system admin had to create in VM, then manually install an operating system on it, install patches for it and configure all of its software. After that, security had to do their thing before it got handed over to the app team. This took a long time and had much room for failures. To solve the problems of the good old days, Ansible was invented. Originally developed by the Ansible Corporation, this now Red Hat backed project brings an easy and understandable YAML-based language which is bundled in so-called playbooks. Those playbooks will always produce the same result and makes provisioning of servers much easier and more reproducible. The idea behind Ansible is that no task should be done manually anymore. The system admin writes an Ansible playbook which includes all the tasks he did manually before. Install the basic operating system, patch it, configure everything and do the security tasks. This playbook then can be run with one click or one command and after that the server is ready. This can be repeated as many times as needed, saving a lot of time and money. Ansible is simple. The config language can even be read by non-technical people like your manager for example. Still it's a powerful tool with a lot of plugins which can do nearly every task that was done manually before. Compared to other tools, Ansible does not require any other software than an SSH agent running on the to be provisioned machine. An agent is not needed at all. Ansible can provision Linux, Windows and Mac OS machines and is perfectly cross-platform. The language is human readable, but still powerful to describe complex applications with different versions. Thanks to the dynamic inventory support, it can be perfectly used for a dynamically changing list of servers, for example in public cloud. Ansible has tons of integrations into other products. What can you do with Ansible? Short answer, anything. Long answer, you can automate your whole infrastructure and nearly all your tasks with Ansible. It can be used for one-shot deployments and continuous delivery without any problems. But Ansible is not only able to provision servers, you can also configure your firewalls, load balancers, storage systems and public cloud resources, for example. You could even provision your phone with it, if you feel like it. Your applications and systems are more than just a collection of configurations. They are a finely tuned ordered list of tasks and processes that result in your working application. Instead of doing all those tasks manually and risk failures, you should write a description of how to do them and then let it run automatically and reproducible by Ansible. While Ansible is perfectly fitting for the task of configuring and managing your servers, OpenShift checks in when it comes to deploying applications on them. Instead of installing applications directly on your servers, the idea behind OpenShift is to pack them into containers and let them run orchestrated in a cluster of container toasts. This makes it much easier to deploy new versions and scale them up if there are more visitors, for example. OpenShift is backed by Kubernetes, a CNCF project and the world's most used container orchestration tool of today. Kubernetes is used by a lot of big companies around the world and has a wider really community, which makes it better every day. With OpenShift on top of it, you will get a fully supported Red Hat product with tools and helpers, which makes it even easier to use Kubernetes in production. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you a few different OpenShift architectures. OpenShift is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which runs Docker and the Kubernetes orchestration in the bottom. This takes care of networking, storage, 
a container registry, metrics like logging and monitoring, and of course security tasks. On top of that, Shift packs tools for easier management of your applications and their deployments. It supports a lot of deployment strategies, for example Git to push deploy or red green deployment. A big catalog of Red Hat supported services like databases and application middlewares makes it even easier to fastly deploy your applications. A simple OpenShift architecture is based on a single master, an infrastructure node, and one to two application nodes. The IT crowd configures and deploys their applications over the master, which then runs on the application nodes. The end user connects via the infrastructure node, which routes the traffic to the according application node. On a bit more higher available architecture, there are multiple infrastructure nodes behind a dedicated load balancer. This makes the whole setup a bit more fault tolerant and scalable. On this setup, operations still connect to the master directly. On a fully high available architecture, there are at least three masters and three infrastructure nodes behind the load balancer. This more fault tolerant setup allows failures of masters, infrastructure nodes, and of course, app nodes. In case of such an error, OpenShift uses its self-healing features to reshuttle everything on a still working node. In this setup, there is a load balancer for the master API as well, and the ops guy don't connect directly to one of the masters anymore. The official way to deploy OpenShift is over the OpenShift Ansible installer from Red Hat. It consists of quite a lot of playbooks and roles to fit nearly every scenario of an OpenShift deployment, from a single node cluster to big high availability setups. It supports nearly all host systems, from bare metal to public cloud and everything in between. While Red Hat is backing its development, it is still community driven, making it better every day. With the cluster container native storage, Red Hat delivers a stable solution for storage on top of your OpenShift installation. Cluster is deployed in containers inside of OpenShift and uses the block storage solution of the public cloud of your choice. This allows you to dynamically provision volumes the same way, no matter where your OpenShift installation runs. The OpenShift architecture for container native storage nearly looks the same as an installation without it. There are some extra nodes which are dedicated to storage with attached block devices and containers for running all your cluster components. This all can be deployed using the official Ansible installer. On top of the Ansible installer, we developed a tool which also takes care of deploying the underlying infrastructure. For this task, it makes use of HashiCorp's Terraform. With some glue logic, it's ready for fully automated deployments from a CI tool, scaling up and down, and much more tasks. Of course, it supports container native storage as well. Thanks to the use of Terraform in our solution, it supports deploying OpenShift on multiple clouds the exact same way. With some help of a CI system and send metrics, it's possible to scale the underlying infrastructure on demand or fully automated based on metrics. All this happens without any downtime. Ansible takes part in preparation all nodes and install OpenShift on it. It is also used for day two operations, scaling up and upgrading the whole cluster. The workflow of our Ansible deployment framework looks like this. First, our wrapper reads a unified configuration file and generates configs for Terraform and Ansible. Then it deploys all the needed infrastructure resources using Terraform and prepares them via Ansible. After these tasks, it runs the official OpenShift installer for a fully working cluster. One big feature of our deployment tool is that it includes a lot of unit and infrastructure tests. It will verify the results of every step run to make sure no error will cause a problem. The official OpenShift installer only includes some smoke tests, while our solution tests much more in detail. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to deploy the infrastructure, prepare it, and then install OpenShift on top of it using our deployment framework. All of this is fully automated and can run in your desired CI systems. But for this demonstration, I will run it locally. First, for our demonstration, I'm going to run our deployment Python wrapper to show what commands it will provide. The first step of our deployment is to adjust the configuration file to your desired needs. As you can see, this configuration file unifies all the configurations of Ansible and Terraform and so on. It has um, options for everything you can imagine. For example, um, the instance types, the network settings, the Red Hat subscription keys and so on. 
Then we will run our Python wrapper to generate all the configurations. In background, it will generate the Ansible playbooks, the Ansible arrays, and the whole Terraform configuration. This will only take a few seconds. After generating the configuration files, we can move on to deploy our infrastructure using Terraform. For this, I will also run a command using the Python wrapper. The deployment of the infrastructure will take around 10 minutes and we will fast forward the console output. After we see this output, Terraform deployed all the infrastructure required for installing OpenShift. There was no manual action required to do this. After deploying the infrastructure, we will need to update the DNS. For this, there is also a command in our Python wrapper. Before we move on to prepare our hosts, we will run some unit tests to see if everything was deployed as needed. As you can see, all the tests are passed, so we can assume that all our infrastructure is deployed correctly. We are now ready to prepare our bastion host. The bastion host is required to install the OpenShift later on. The preparation of the bastion host will take about 5 minutes. We will also fast forward this task. After preparing the bastion host, we will have to generate a dynamically updated list of our Ansible hosts. This command will only take a few seconds. Now we will have to upload this list to the bastion host. For this, there is also a command in our Python wrapper. The next and most time-consuming part of our deployment is to prepare the hosts. For that, our installer will upgrade all packages, install Docker, configure the volumes, and so on. This step will take about 45 minutes. In the future, we plan to optimize this step so it will run faster. As you can see, all tests have passed as expected. We will now come to the step where we will invoke the official Ansible installer. For that, we also have a command in our Python wrapper. As you can see, all tests have passed as expected. We will now move on to the part where we will invoke the official OpenShift installer by Red Hat. This step will also take around 30 to 35 minutes. From our side, there is not much room of improvement to speed up this step. After we are seeing these screens, all playbooks and tasks have run successfully. We should now have a fully deployed OpenShift cluster. To make sure everything worked as expected, we will again run some unit tests. The passing of all the tests telling us that nothing was gone wrong during the deploy of OpenShift. We will now have a fully working OpenShift cluster. Our deployment tool provides a helper to SSH into a node. I will now SSH into the master node to show you all the OpenShift nodes has deployed. As you can see, all the nodes in OpenShift are marked as ready. We can assume now that the installation has worked perfectly. The final step is to open up the web console and log in into OpenShift. As you can see, logging to the OpenShift web console works without any problems. We now have a fully working OpenShift cluster. Thanks to our framework, the deployment of the cluster and the underlying infrastructure did not require any manual actions. Any questions? Don't hesitate to contact us on the usual social media platforms or website or write a comment down below this video. We would love to hear from you, stay tuned for more informational videos, see you there!